how can an undisciplined person practice the task of budgeting? Oh, yes. Uh, wow. Well, the good news is that you live in the 21st century and you have apps, you have tools, you can automate banking. So when I do, I will, I will share with you one thing that I help people do. I've done some financial coaching. It's usually for a couple um, uh, or a, um, a, it's usually for a couple okay. and it's usually one person that is self-employed. So that's an interesting thing. It's usually a couple where one person is self-employed. Okay. And one of the things you have to do is first, you have to budget off the right numbers. Many people set a budget, but their income is not what they think it is. So even if they stick to that budget, they fail. Okay. Second, you have to build. Wait, wait. So what do you mean by that? By that, so, you know, if, if you're going to budget 50,000 a year because your salary is 50,000 a year, that's wrong. Your $50,000 salary is pre-tax. Okay. So I don't know if you can still see me here. Yes, my, computer, my computer is doing things. It just popped up something. So $50,000 is pre-tax. So that's not your actual salary. That's not the number you should budget off of. Okay. okay. So that's one. And then number two, um, you need to understand the differences between diff bills. So there are types, different types of people. Some people like to spend money. Shayo, I don't know if you know, you've heard this before. Some people like to spend money. Okay. Some people, uh, some people like to hold on to money. Okay. Okay. Those are distinct personality orientations call them that you 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 get it from life experience from how you are from your worries your fears all that sort of thing a lot of people are wealthy because they're just not comfortable uh, giving up money it's not because they're more responsible than everybody else okay. so so you need to know where you are okay mm -hmm. some people have to learn how to spend because they don't ever give up their money so they eventually have to learn how to spend so if you are somebody who spends then you have to keep money away from yourself. <laughs> it's very simple. Keep money away. I just gave someone, a, a client, a huge tip a while ago that, so I am someone who likes to spend. So what I do whenever I have money, I buy all the stuff around the house. You buy all the stuff around the house? Yes, I buy all the things. We, I buy most of our groceries. Oh, that's what you mean. I just, because, because I like to buy people things, right? Okay. So, so my brain doesn't know that I'm doing the right thing because I'm buying people stuff. I'm buying my kids food. I'm buying my wife's food. I'm buying my, what we're going to eat. And when I'm done, you know, or I pay our bills and things like that. So I feel like I'm spending money. I'm tricking myself. I, it's, it feels great because I'm buying all this stuff you know, but it's all stuff we're going to have to buy anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. And so a lot of people, you know, you, so you have to know yourself and then you kind of work that trick that helps. Um, one more thing, there are many, many, many things that'll come up, but one more thing I'll share is uh, I already hinted at keeping money away from yourself. So for example, if you have $5,000, but you have $4,000 in bills, why should you even ever look at a bank account with $5,000 in it? You should only be looking at a bank account with $1,000 in it. Because okay. that's, that's the money you actually have to spend. Okay, you know? so if you have $5,000 cash and you have 4,000 mm -hmm. bills, you should only be looking at $1,000. Yeah, you should, you should have all your money in the account for bills separate. You know, this is, this is 2020. It's not expensive to have multiple bank accounts. So you should have a bank account for bills separate. So that when you look, the account that you look at, like we all know this, you, ha you know the account you look at to find out how much money you have to spend this weekend. You know what account that is. Mm -hmm. That account should only have what you should actually be spending. Mm -hmm. it, shouldn't have, it shouldn't have a penny more. It should have only what you should actually be spending. So that when you look in that account and it says $100, you can spend all of it. If it says 1000 you can spend all of it. As opposed to, Maybe you buy, you, you overdo it uh, because you overdo it thinking maybe something else will happen and then you miscalculate it and it just goes down. So that's another one. And the last thing I'll suggest is, um, so first budget off the right number. Second is the don't, don't have access to money that you shouldn't have access to in the first place.
-hmm. And then the third thing I'll suggest is understand the difference between two types of expenses. Um, I wrote a book many years ago in 2013 where I put this in there for the first time. Um, there are two types of expenses that I think matter. You have your monthly expenses, the ones that happen every single month. And then you have what I call your, your wish list. Um, and your wish list is the expenses that happen less frequently than that, typically once or twice a year or the ones that you can control when you do it. So, you know, you want to go to Aruba for vacation. You don't put that in your monthly budget. You only budget for your monthly bills. And then you have this wish list of things that if you have money, you'll do them. But if you don't have money, you'll be fine. So many times people mix the two up. People set up a budget that doesn't factor in that the car will break down. You don't know when it'll break down, but it'll break down. Mm -hmm. right um so at some point you know that you want to go on a vacation you don't be some people might budget a hundred dollars a month towards a voca vacation but i think it's more of i need to do this vacation here's how much money i need to spend on it but here's how much i actually need to spend on my bills and the money for my bills uh, only what i need to pay my bills goes into that account and all the other money goes somewhere else. And I'll figure out later what to do with that money, right? So that's just one way, but the basic idea is automation. So we're mentioning names here. If we're, if we're mentioning names of people who have written about this. Automation is a big idea for uh, Ramit Sethi, who wrote, I will, think, I will Teach You To Be Rich many years ago. Um, automation is a big idea. Like in my view, it's the biggest idea that I've seen from everything he he has that I've, that I've seen is automation, automating accounts, moving money away. Um, so I would do that. Uh, I would definitely do that. But you know, there's a couple other things and it gets way more complicated if you're in a relationship with someone. Mm, mm. I, I believe that because that's two different spending habits coming together and unifying if it is two different spending habits, but two different lifestyles. For sure. Two different spending habits, two different lifestyles. Two different sets of uh, financial goals, two different sets of financial worries and fears, two different sets of families and friends. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot.